Hola chicos, bueno, aquí los dejo con los helicópteros Apache, que son algunas unidades que UK va a poner dentro de algún tiempo más en, en el mercado para países aliados, entre ellos Chile. Así que disfruten. It is incredibly exhilarating when you're pulling the trigger. You can feel the bottom of the floor underneath your feet shaking. Uh, you can hear the thumping of the gun. Uh, the whole aircraft vibrates. If you're firing the gun off to the side uh, of the aircraft onto a target because the gun slews significantly underneath the, uh, the aircraft. The recoil causes the aircraft to twist and to move. Firing the aircraft live is exactly what we're all about. For the past three weeks, this wild stretch of coast has been under attack. Exercise Grey Eagle has seen the latest cohort of weapons instructors qualify to teach new Apache pilots how to fire. But first, the Apaches must be armed and prepared, and that is the work of a dedicated team without whom the aircraft simply could not fly. The Apaches take off from the squadron's home at Watersham, but because they are forbidden to fly over urban areas with weapons on board, they must first touch down at an abandoned airfield, acting as the forward arming and refueling point, or FARP, and for the past three weeks, home to the ground crew. So the aircraft's going to arrive at the airfield. The ground crew have got vests on, that have got their hearing defence and also microphones so they can then speak with the crew inside the, the aircraft. They walk up, they plug in and also ground the aircraft as well. So basically, as the aircraft's flying through the air, it builds up static electricity to remove that and any risk of sending off the munitions um, to ground the aircraft. So they bring out a big black cable and basically just attach it to the side of the aircraft. They then go through the safing procedures uh, and the shutdown procedures. As they're going through, they have a set of cards and they basically go step by step through those to make sure nothing's missed and it's all safe. And they then start the loading procedure. They use a no volts detector at the back of the tube. They put this in to make sure there's no electrical current going into that pod so that when they then put the munitions in, it doesn't then suddenly detonate and go off. One of the ground crew will bring a rocket over. They'll then touch it on the bottom of the pod, then ground it again with the aircraft to remove any static electricity and will then rest it in one of the pods that has been pointed to. Once this is in, a certain distance, they will then remove some red Velcro which holds the fins in place and then push the rocket a little bit further into the tube. Once everything's all in, they then push them all the way back and then drop the contact arms. Basically, the contact arms initiate the rocket. And it sends the electrical charge down through and then sends it off on its way. The air crew then make sure that all the missiles are showing up on their systems on the point the ground crew have toolboxes. They make sure that no tools have gone missing onto the aircraft, so flight safety, startup procedures and army procedures marshal the cab back and then send it on its way. What we're firing today are practice rounds, effectively. Um, they look exactly the same, apart from a different paint colour. Um, they load up the same, they weigh the same, uh, and then when you're firing, they effectively fire the same. The only differences are, with the rocket, as an example, there's an interchangeable head, effectively, where you would put on, if you were going on operations, an operational uh, head to it, which may be for chef rounds, for example. What we've got today is just a, a head, a lump of steel. So when it hits the target, actually, it doesn't have the apparent same effect when it hits the target. But we're self-sustaining, so we can refuel uh, as well as rearm the aircraft. It's similar to fueling your car, but it's high pressure rather than low pressure in, in uh, petrol stations. So they'll pull out the hose, basically, and connect it to the, to the aircraft, um, and then switch on some switches and then pump it in. Uh, they need to make sure that the Oshkosh is grounded as well, so that's the orange cable you see being pulled out. Clip it to the aircraft, that then grounds it, again, reducing the risk of static electricity and anything going wrong. It's sort of something that gets kind of overlooked is how important the ground crew side of life is. They enable the pilots to go off and do their job. They're basically the second set of eyes on the ground for the pilots in, in the aircraft and making sure that everything's safe and it's good for them to go and, and do what they need to do.